Welcome to Blackbird episode number 25. My name is James, and today I am happy to be joined once again by Brian Norton. Brian, you will remember from his previous appearance on the show, is a serial entrepreneur, a former business executive. He owns several companies now, including a coffee company. And most importantly, he is very active in the freedom movement in the Pacific Northwest, where he hosts Squatch Fest, and he's got a second weekend coming up the Squatch Fest Spring Awakening on May 13th through 16th. We will talk about that in the interview, so I won't spoil it for you here. Before we get started, let me tell you once again about Paloma Verde CBD. Carlos and Vanessa Abilar, friends of the show and a former guest on the show, founded Paloma Verde in the San Antonio area as a brick and mortar store, which was shut down by the governor's orders at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. They have landed on their feet, though, and gone fully online. I am a dedicated user of their tincture, which I use to relieve pain in my neck and back area. Also, my partner uses it to help with insomnia. In addition to the tincture, which I highly recommend, they also offer soft gels, gummies, salve sticks, lotions, sports creams, and even pet products. So whatever your preferred delivery mechanism or potency, head over to palomaverdecbd.com. Now that's a new address from the last time I advertise for them, so mark that. It's palomaverdecbd.com. Use offer code BLACKBIRD at checkout to get 25% off your order. Once again, palomaverdecbd.com. Use offer code BLACKBIRD for 25% off. And with that, here is my interview with Brian Norton. Brian, welcome back. Hey, James, how are you? Man, I'm hanging in there. It's... What? It's been a few months since we talked the last time. I think it was probably before my rebrand even. Um, it was right before your rebranding. You were thinking about it, but you hadn't yeah. settled on a name, but you knew you were going to do it, and I pushed you to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It, yeah. it, it's awesome. I love it now. Between you and Pete Quinones was the other one that like really was like, no, you got to do it, dude. If it, if it feels right, do it now. So cool. And I appreciate it. I've had a lot more success with the, with the new brand than the, than the old one. Um, yeah, because you were so early into it, right? That was yeah. the time. That's yeah. what I, I changed a bunch of stuff on my coffee stuff early. And, uh, you know, it's you're never ready to go to market. You just got to go to market yeah. and change as fast as you can. Exactly. <laughs> well, and the other thing uh, that the the Agoris brand, like I would still, I guess, kind of following in Monica Perez's footsteps, I would still call myself like a philosophical Agorist or whatever. Um, like I totally buy into what Konkin said. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a practicing agorist and I do think that there's some merit in the political party process just because, you know, that's the real world that we live in. Um, I don't think we're going to bring down the state just through black and gray market activity. Uh, yeah, you can't, you can't, it's not decoupled, right? It's uh, it's all parallel. It's yeah. all moving forward at the same time. Yeah. So exactly. the, tr- the trick is to like not, not get squished between the boat and the dock. Yeah. Uh, and actually, Vin Armani, right after he was on my show, wrote an article about armchair agorists, and I think it was probably about me. Like he wrote a he wrote a quote in the in the article uh, <laughs> that, that sounded eerily like something I said. Um, so uh, you know, I took that to heart too. Uh, I actually just found out about that in the in the last couple of weeks because I, I didn't read that episode or that uh, issue of Counter Markets, which is a great newsletter, but it's a lot. Of, it's a lot. Um, yeah. and you know, I've already got so many subscriptions that I'm reading. So anyway, I missed it until last week when he posted a video of himself reading that article. I was like, Oh my God, that's me. Like, <laughs> so it's like, uh, in, so yet another reason I probably shouldn't brand myself as an agorist. Um, and you know, who, who knows how long I want to be an urban anything. I mean, I've already started looking. Yeah. At I really hope you get your farm. The, uh, yeah. um, gosh, when we looked for our land, well, the, the whole, we'll get into the Swatch Fest stuff. Um, but there's bonus. I mean, I got 15 acres. Um, it's way too much land for any single human. <laughs> it, it, it's ridiculous until you start like, are, are you a permaculturalist at all? 
Uh, well, I would. I, I guess I'm probably an armchair permaculturalist too. Just <laughs> too. That's great. <laughs> okay, so uh, so really, Bill Mollison's thing is right. You're supposed to take one step out your door and design that square foot yeah. first. Yeah. And once that's perfect, right, design the next square foot and the next square foot. Um, when you get to having a million square feet, um, just starting is just an overwhelming task. Where where to start? Um, you know, and you're supposed to. You're supposed to put in nine thinking hours for every hour of action. Um, Boy. So, yeah, it like I felt kind of bad the first year really doing nothing. It, uh, beating back the blackberries as best we could to make a little trail so we could even get on the land to kind of see what we had to work with. Um, but a lot of time to think about the stuff is paying off now that we're five years later, right? And it's coming time to stick stuff in. Then I'm not having to make like last minute decisions two weeks before the festival about where <laughs> stuff's going. Yeah, um, man, I think if I had, we... <laughs> I think if I had 15 acres, like that much land, I, I'm I have no aspirations of being like a soybean farmer or anything like that. I, I think here in Minnesota, I'd probably do some sort of like prairie restoration or something like that, just to exactly just to bring the bring the land back to where it was meant to be. Yeah, we bought clear cut. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it was so damaged. Um, yeah, that I anything I do to it, I feel real good about because we, we are, I mean, is a blackberry field and everybody wants to start with like spray the crap, right? And get on with life. And I've battled five years with machetes and blades and a lot. I mean, we, we're getting the land back the right way. Um, so it's it's like a Zen meditation. I go out and work on my little bit every day, but every day I make progress. So, you know, it, it is a hip camp. Um, actually, <laughs> uh, we had a huge birthday blowout last weekend to get ready for Squatch Fest. Um, oh, yeah. So I had a bunch of bunch of friends out, and uh, we were we were killing blackberries and cutting up trees and burning a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, I, I I guess that had incorrectly turned off my hip camp. Um, so <laughs> at least two couples showed up and I thought they were just part of the freedom cell stuff because a bunch of people were coming out to help uh, make the space ready. And, uh, you know, I was like, pickaxes are over there and shovels and have at it, kids. And uh, Oh, man. <laughs> it, it was about four hours later. Uh, actually, I heard Miguel in the woods say something about well, you tell, you're not on Telegram and you're not in free, like, how, well, how the heck do you know this even exists? And they're like, well, we just, we, we rented the space on Hip Camp. Um, so <laughs> they were, they were, and they were doing work for you anyway? Yeah, they came out oh, and were man. busting ass and were working yeah. and it was so, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we offered them, yeah, we were all having a blast. So we offered them a bunch of fun stuff. Uh, they had their, they, they did their, so they made their own little camp, did their own little thing. They were, ha so they, we kept like, Hey, you know, you guys are welcome. You're out here partying with us to so come by the giant fire, do your thing. We you know we don't bite. Um, and uh, by the end of the second day, I forgot how I found, I made some offhanded comment about building inspectors and like, why the hell would anybody need permission to do, you know, to build your reality? And uh, the one guy's buddy started laughing. So I knew I had just caught. <laughs> so <laughs> it turns out the guy who crashed the party is actually a building inspector. Um, no way. Yeah, yeah. It's hilarious. But I got him like within 30 seconds to admit the whole thing's complete bullshit. It exists to like keep the state happy and keep the money flow going. Oh my God. Um, that is so funny. So yeah. So they named their camp that they built um, the Slippery Otter. And now they're going to come back for Squatch Fest and host a 24-hour, three-day-long D&D uh, game in this big cedar grove that I uh, uncovered the other day. My God. So, yeah, hey, we won. We won two. You know, whatever. I'm going to keep working on them. <laughs> that is so cool. Man, yeah, that, yeah. Next, next time you need to have a traffic cop accidentally camp out on your on your site and start talking about the road pirates yeah it uh, man you know what when you get i uh, i remember clear as day michigan state like weed was illegal back then and uh gosh i forgot where we went camping somewhere just north of lansing and like halfway through a giant fatty the guy handed it to me he's like hey and by the way i'm the sheriff <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I've smoked with judges. I've smoked with sheriffs. I mean, Jesus, it, that's that was the whole thing throughout all of this. That's insanity, right? It's a war. They've declared war on the population, and all of them partake. I, I mean, uh, I mean, God, 
<laughs> out of my 3,000 clients that I used to sell to in the corporate world, I probably smoked weed with 2,800 of them. Yeah. So, you know, it uh, doesn't care whose boardroom you're in. I, well, I, I, I guess the guys that I didn't smoke weed with, I did blow. So, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's so... Uh, I've always been... The war on the American population with the war on drugs is just about as insane as the war on terror. I mean, it, 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 it's kind of like what living in Russia had to be like, right? Like yeah. everything you did was against the law. So everybody's against the government at some level because that's just the neighborhood can't function without it. Yeah. And that's, again, where black and gray markets come in. I mean, you know, they're, they're not maybe the end all and be all, but they're definitely, definitely helpful and necessary. Um, it seems also like they're kind of combining all this stuff, you know, like the domestic spying and, and, international terrorist spying and all that stuff are kind of just being combined and the drug war and the war on crime and the war on human trafficking is all yeah. kind of of a piece. Like all of these things are just, are just combining right now. I think the day Biden got sworn in, I want to say the CIA officially listed the Libertarian Party as a, as a, a threat to U.S. safety or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's all effing government. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, shit. I wanted to tell you the story about Float. Okay, so, so I, that's last time we had talked, I hadn't, like, the, the, the idea had not crystallized yet, but it was really close. I was getting there. Um, and right after we talked, so I started this whole thing called the 500 project. Yeah. Um, so it's a hashtag now hashtag the 500 project or hashtag 500 project. And I paid, uh, some artist guys to make a really cool logo. It's a triangle. Uh, it says 500 project, know your farmer producer on the bottom. Um, it's got my farm name on the left and I forgot what's on the right. Uh, oh, my coffee club thing. Cause that, that's what my 500 project is, right? It's kind of off the like thousand fans, right? Find your thousand true fans who never work a day in your life. Yeah. Um, I was like, if you do awesome shit, you don't need a thousand shit. I mean, really, I penciled the number out 500 will make my life really nice. Uh, I, I will be able to reorganize the way that I do shipping and creating stuff right onto a timeline that's known because I ship every 15th of the month. Um, the first, like last month was the first real month with the club rolling the way it should. And my life was 10 times easier. So it, it was a 10 X getting my life back, um, you know, probably for a doubling of income so far. Um, so it's, it, it will allow me to kind of, I've got the Airbnb and the hip camp thing, right? Those are all spun up. I don't have to really do anything for those now except meet people and, and be friendly. Um, but the uh, but the coffee thing is, is a lot of growth left in it. Um, so what I'm doing is this 500 club, you join, it's either two pounds a month or six pounds a month or any increment thereof. You just order it on the website. You order one time off the website. That gets you in the club. Then I set up billing however you want. You can you can get you know pay on Visa, Mastercard, debit, yada yada. I take almost any crypto. Um, I'm open to barters, trades, silver, gold, whatever. I don't care. Um, the whole deal is, you're my tribe. You're my 500. I will. I I am your coffee bitch. Whatever you need. You need a Zoom call for someone to give a coffee education seminar. You need a brew technology class. I I I've worked with farming side of it, importation side. So anyway, I can people up. I know a ton of the coffee business. I know a ton of people in the coffee business. Um, Miguel needed uh, needed coffee service for the King County Libertarian Party thing the other day. And since he's one of my 500, when he asked, hell yeah. <laughs> so um, that's just, that's, that's what you're, and you're not just buying coffee from me. You are getting a relationship with the bona fide yeah. coffee expert and I'm your guy. And the cool thing is when we hit 500, that website is going to look totally different. All the coffee stuff goes away, goes behind the lock wall. Then, then it will just be my farming stuff and the ducks and the, uh, the, the open to the public stuff. Um, my coffee people will be my coffee people. I'll start a waiting list. The prices will go up significantly when the waiting list starts. Um, so there's definite benefit for joining the club now. So I kind of, that was all coming together when we had talked last time, but I hadn't, I didn't have a name for it. I didn't have like, I had the vision, but I, it, so that all kind of, it's come together. The website's built, the click to buy, all, all the stuff's there, foodforestfarms.com. Um, so, but I knew I needed to get the word out, right? And then how am I going to find my Liberty tribe? I want to serve cool people. 
I don't want to serve status pricks. So um, I went on a mission. I'm going to hit every freedom fest that I can find this year. Um, and I also wanted to start a video channel. So I drove down to Austin intent to meet uh, uh, Kingsley and Aaron Edwards that started float for float fest. Um, it was awesome. It was a crazy drive. Um, I ended up picking up my dad in Phoenix, uh, who's like a lifelong Republican. He's like 75, Boy. just survived cancer. It, like he, I, I was like, you know, he, before you cash it in, you need to see a festival. So all the way from Phoenix to Austin, he kept looking at their website and read their stuff. And he's like, I don't understand. There's no rules. Like you can vend anything. And I was like, yeah, just wait. <laughs> um, so he ran in there and like slapped his hundred bucks down for the free, free unlimited bar uh, that they were running. And uh, at the end of the weekend, that was the one thing he's like, Oh my God, there was like all the booze you could drink unlimited. I didn't say one drunk person the entire weekend. I was like, yeah, that's oh, wow. when people get together at, uh, you know, at a Liberty thing, like you're talking about a pretty high level of intellect uh, and Aaron and Kingsley with the float and being attached to Bitcoin and really like getting roots in the crypto community. The, the level of human that was at the event, I, I, the farm looked nicer rolling out than it, than it did rolling in. I mean, people were not making a mess or we cleaning up. Um, the neighbor was super happy with how the event was going. He slaughtered a pig and brought it over to the smoker guys so they could feed everybody. Um, I'm like that's that's how I want my festival to be. It's like if the neighbors are so happy you're having a festival, they're coming over and participating. I'm like you know you're doing it right. It, it, their, the farm was beautiful. So yeah, to be an advertisement for Float Fest, if you don't go next year and you're in the Liberty community, you were crazy. It's an awesome time of year. Austin is great. 150 acre farm. It was like golf course grass. Jeez. And it was so big. We never made it back to the end of the, I never found the end of the tents. Um, so I went down there intent to set up a super awesome coffee display. Um, so I, I kind of parked by the front, by the main stage, so I could get everybody on their way to and fro. Um, yep. Aaron and Kingsley came by, awarded us best vendor of the show. Um, that was super fun. And uh, awesome. so then they hooked me up with the float van guy. Um, so if anybody needs his info, uh, cause they want to start streaming on float and they're just not putting it together, uh, DM me and I, I will send you his info. He hooked me up in like five minutes. All I have is really old stuff. I've got like iPhone six. That's it. <laughs> um, but he was able to get it so I can use the second program and uh, go live with one button and it just goes to float and goes up on the air now. So, great. Uh, yeah, so he's really how he did that, that it was worth the trip. Um, are totally you able to, up with those guys. Are you yeah. able to stream on float and like other services all at the same time? You know? If you want to pay money. So my rule mm -hmm. was I have an iPhone six and I'm cheap. I don't pay service fees that are recurring ever <laughs> even though i'm selling a monthly copy program it's so funny uh but so that was limitation and uh, his it guy worked it out yeah if i wanted to stream to multiple platforms at once i could pay for the upgraded streaming thing that he put me with on Streamlabs. um so then you could stream to youtube and, and float and who, whomever else at the same time probably mm -hmm. twitch and d live right Oh, I think yeah. you can stream up to, if you pay for the upgraded one, you can stream to 10 different things at once with one button, which is kind of handy. Yeah. Sounds like it. I, I haven't started live streaming yet, but um, that's probably coming up around the bend, at least for premium subscribers. I, uh, I was telling you before we started recording, I've um, decided that if I'm going to, if I'm going to do this podcast thing long-term, then I kind of want to be a little more professional about it. And so I've hired, uh, I've hired Tom Woods and Buck Johnson's audio editor to, kind of take over production because that is the biggest bottleneck for me. But I, the time that I'm saving with that, I need to, I need to make it profitable. Otherwise I'm just pouring money down the drain for a hobby. And uh, I sure don't want to do that. So the time that I'm saving with audio production, which I hate doing, I'm going to, I'm going to use for writing and maybe doing, maybe doing live streams and things like that. Um, bringing on guests, obviously you will be among the guests for just the support. It's the whole thing, right? Like, 
I love doing content and I had kicked around doing a, uh, doing a show forever. Um, and my, my one buddy kept talking about being a, you know, doing the producer thing and, and learning all that. And he just never got it done. So that's when I scrapped it and I was like, F it. I'm just going to go be a guest on people's show. Cause I have no, no time or energy or to learn that, um, audio stuff at all, which is really funny now that I'm kind of going around and figuring out all the video stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. You know what? When you find something you like, it's not like work because you're just tinkering to figure stuff out to build stuff. And it just happens to be that it can return cash. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's about applying a business thought though to everything you do. Um, yeah, shoot. I wanted to say something about... Um, okay. So uh, going, so management by walking around. Have you ever heard of that as a management theory? No. No. Oh yeah, that's how the Waltons are. The, I mean, the number one richest family in America, almost. I've experienced. Um, I've been. I've been on the receiving end of management by walking around. I don't. I don't. So that, I guess I don't that, know the theory behind it, though. No, that was an actual class taught at Michigan State back in the nineties. Um, uh, and then it was right when Deming was coming out with Six Sigma, um, continuous improvement. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Sam used to jump in the jet and his like top five, 10 dudes, they would jump on the Gulf stream or whatever and fly, start flying out of uh, Bentonville there. And they would literally just rip around undisclosed any direction Sam wanted to go. And he would just look down with binocs at parking lots till he saw something that interested him. Goodness. They would, they would lay on that thing and the whole entourage would go find out what was going on. Um, and that was pretty much, from the very beginning, that that so that whole class was built on his philosophy, Sam Walton management by walking around. Like by walking around, you will see the outlier that's not right because something's either good or bad, right? But you'll never see that from an office. Um, you know, like there was one where I forgot. There's there's all kinds of stories about why he went down to see the stuff and then what he found out, and it was always like, aha, yeah, you would never get that reading rolled up reports from regional people because they would hide all that crap from you. Yeah. Um, so, oh God, when back in the ooh, 2000s, I used to run like 13 pizza restaurants. Um, and it was the same. So I use that philosophy a lot in it. I found out so much stuff by just popping in um, when they never know where you... And the other thing is, right, with, uh, with taking statistics, <laughs> when you pop in and it's a shit show, it's always a shit show. <laughs> like people always have this bias, right? We're like, oh, okay, I just caught them on their bad day, yada yada. No, right. you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh. you, you took a sample. <laughs> it was it, it was you, a bad result. Trust, and if you go to trust one, the numbers, <laughs> if you go to one location and it's a shit show, and you go to the next location and it's all buttoned up, that just means that the manager probably called and let them know you're on your way. Like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. I would 100%. When I would roll out of one store, I would drive south, loop around the block, go back the other way and go to the store to the north. Oh, yeah. No. I, I, yeah, it's it's a game. <laughs> Management is all. You know what? It's the beauty of that. That was the funnest part about sales, right? All the suits would try to like think up different compensation plans to like motivate the troops, right? And within five minutes of giving it to me, every quarter, I would just you know, like, Okay, you understand how you shot yourself in the foot, right? We're all going to stop doing X and do Y now. Oh, no, stop doing X. Well, okay, you wrote the plan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you might want to talk to the guys that are like executing the plan next time before you like send it out to the troops. At least beta test it. Jeez. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, um, so, okay, let's see. Oh, so Float Fest. Uh, so, Aaron, and, uh, so. I went down to, we, we had pulled off. I think when I first talked to you, Miguel and I had just pulled off Squatch Fest, right? In six days after Inslee gave us a stupid lockdown order. And we got like, oh, between 50 and 100 people showed up total. So we went to float to like, how do we do this? Like, how do we take our festival to the next level? Um, so while I was at Float Fest, well, the year before, I was tripping hard one day, actually. And I had a vision of like, go back to the music, work with flight. And in 2019, I went back the other day and looked up the emails. I had sent emails out after that to people that I know that own lighting companies and and are in a pretty good size, other guys in a pretty good size band. And I offered to apprentice myself for free to both of them. Um, Because I was like, I guess I'm supposed to do light shows or something. Uh, Totally not. (laughs) So at Float Fest, I met DJ Lightspeed. He was camping right behind me. 
Um, we had an awesome talk. He's totally Liberty DJ. He's down. Um, so we put together a sunrise set out at Float. So if you look on it, we didn't have the floating uh, streaming stuff figured out yet because we hadn't met the float man guy. Um, so if you look on YouTube, DJ Lightspeed, uh, Reboot America, Float Fest, it's a, it's a great set. Um, so then I invited him from, he lives in uh, Jersey. So him and his producer, they're going to fly out to, uh, to Squatch Fest. So Squatch Fest is uh, arts, music, and learning festival. The first one last November, that was the feedback we got as everybody left, is they wanted more education-y, learning hands-on, group interactive, kind of like make it a workshop thing. So being decentralized and following the float model, we just put it back out and said, okay, there's room for like 10 sub camps like within the thing everybody just claim something somebody make something and it's yours you got the space uh so we got uh the zaki trance dance camp set up uh we got the D, the slippery otter camp set up um there's gal coming out she's gonna do yoga every morning uh lead meditation um, I think there's a sound bath guy coming. We got now we have a musical director. Uh, this, is uh, all for, Rock, this is all for Squatch Fest 2.0. Squatch Fest. Two, okay. Yeah. And that was the other thing. Everybody decided they wanted to party twice a year. So we're going to have Squatch Fest, the Spring Awakening, and Squatch Fest Harvest Party. Um, nice. We put this one in May, six months apart was about right. But we're thinking it's a little too late in the season for. Uh, uh, like early spring. So we're going to, well, next year we'll move it back to April. Um, so the fall one, we're moving back into the weekend before uh, um, Halloween. So it should be pretty easy. So we should be like mid April, mid October, six months apart. Uh, you know, it will give us. So yeah, uh, let's see. I'm teaching building a geodesic dome out of uh, paracord and stuff you find in the woods. Um, we're going to wrap it with uh, shrink wrap for rapid pallets. Because you know it rains out here. <laughs> hey, tell me, tell me about that. Tell me what uh, what's the utility of a geodesic dome? Oh, geodesic domes! Oh my gosh, uh, you ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Buck, well, buck, the thing buck is, so Fuller, real quick. The, yeah. So, Adam versus the man guy. I forgot his last name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I know. I voted for him for president last year. <laughs> what the hell was Coke Cash. Coke Cash. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess he has like a geodesic dome company and I have no idea. Like what, what, what are they used for? What, why? I've seen, okay. I've seen him in the social distancing regime. Like some restaurants had him out on their patios to uh, keep oh, people warm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, a geodesic dome uh, was basically, I think the first person who really put it on the map as an architect was Buckminster Fuller. Um, it uses the least amount of building materials per cubic foot under roof, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't have, think about four walls and a roof. You got five walls, right? A dome kind of, you, you're doing this, you, you're roofing the same thing with about five eighths the amount of material. Um, domes, as you push down harder on the top of them, they, their, structure, um, their structure holds itself up. It gets stronger the more force you mm-hmm. apply to it. Right, so like a, a a cube, you start applying like force sideways on a corner, hard like a tornado thing or a yeah. big tree falling on it, right? and it, it yeah, it, t- it makes the box go wonky, right, until it collapses. Um, domes actually get stronger the more weight you put on them and t- until they collapse. Um, you can, uh, gosh. Back in the seventies, they were like inflating like air balloons, like canvas and stuff, right, and then. Sp- like chicken wiring up against that and then stucco in. Um, have you heard of foam crete now? No, that sounds great. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Strong and well I'm giving you all, all kinds of stuff to YouTube. Yeah. So if like two inches of foam crete, you can have a blow torch, uh, welding torch on one side and have your hand on the other just fine. It, the heat won't transfer. Um, so it's just concrete that they've put through high pressure tubing with a little bit of dish soap and water. So it puts... It makes viscosity in the concrete, right? So now you've got all these air voids. Um, so it, it's 
It's not sealed like concrete. So once you build something out of it, you have to seal it because it's breathable. But breathable is kind of also good for houses, right? Because you don't want to trap all the nasty in. Um, But it's mold proof for being up here where it's wet all the time. So building with foam creep for sure out on my property. Actually, uh, it's it's awesome having the festival because people start coming. Uh, a natural building guy just showed up who wants to put in. Uh, he wants to run the bar and barbecue concession, I guess. So I was like, have at it. Uh, so that uh, yeah, um, that's what he's building. But yeah, so domes are you get the most amount of space. They're structurally uh, super strong. Uh, if, you, if I was living in like Tornado Alley, for sure I would have a concrete dome. I mean, it's it's they're impenetrable, really. Um, you can uh, you can cage them so you can make them safe from uh, uh, from pulses, uh, all kinds of stuff. But they're they're great space. Uh, you can okay, so they're really easy pattern to put together. If you just click in um, uh, dome parts uh, calculator into Brave. Boom, it'll come right up. Um, there's like basically eight steps for us to build this dome in the woods. And it tells you like you need 35 logs that are 12.56 inches and you need, you know, 27 logs that are this size. And then you just do the hubs or you can crush conduit or actually then I started spinning around on Amazon last night. They're selling PVC dome hub kits where you just buy the, uh, the five, six or seven way hubs and click in the PVC mm-hmm. into it. So yeah, if you for space, they are the most amount of space you can make the fastest, the cheapest. Domes. So so uh and so people are just gonna be using them in place of tents and stuff like that. Is that your is that sort of your vision for it? Um this one I met so I'm building a giant one. It's gonna be 40 foot diameter, like 30 feet high, 35 feet high. Um yeah, yeah. We we're yeah, it's called this. The first one's gonna be called the Dome in the Woods. Uh, and that is where DJ is gonna put on the show. Uh Friday night's free for all ticketed squatches, and Saturday night is a benefit show for the Crypto Six. Um, so have you have you heard about Crypto Six? What's going on? And Mm. all those guys getting arrested. Holy smoke. Okay. So the Free Talk Live guys up in New Hampshire um, that run uh, Bitcoin ATMs as part of their church outreach. Um, the, the gosh, they got raided by six agencies at once a month ago, uh, March fifteenth. So FBI, DEA, uh, Treasury, uh, God, who else got them? Uh, post office. I forgot. They brought like two bear cats. They were flying drones in. They Good raided Lord. like six houses at once. Yeah, they got a grandma. Uh, like it's, it's insane. So if you go read the indictment, if you look up, if you just Google in or brave, whatever indictment, Ian Freeman, you can read it for yourself. They're charging him for like currency trade. Like the one side's the treasury's like suing him for money manipulation. Right. But the FBI is, or the, the IRS is getting them because they, they're calling Bitcoin an asset, right? But the treasury is saying it's a currency and they've indicted them on two different things saying Bitcoin is two different things. So either the tax guys are going to invalidate the currency guy's case, right? Or So the government's indicted them for Bitcoin being two different things. And in the state of New Hampshire, uh, I forgot, I think there's a federal ruling too. Uh, it was already ruled that cryptocurrency is code so it's speech so <laughs> uh the crypto six k oh as this rolls through now is, is going to have to define what cryptocurrency is like by the end of this case there will be u.s law as to is it currency is it an asset is it just code is it speech so um uh, it's a huge case so anyway so that's why I'm putting on this concert on uh, on Saturday. Uh, DJ Lightspeed's the guy. He he's he's the freedom DJ. So he's coming out. We're gonna raise money for the defense. They're saying they're gonna need all six of them are gonna need like a minimum just to get through the first round of the federal trials, like a hundred grand. They're saying it's probably closer to two hundred fifty even to even to start. They won't let uh, Ian and the captain out of jail. They say they're flight risks. Um, so like the grandma's out. The couple of the like other guys but they haven't accused him of anything violent right you could like 
you can be a governor and like rape kids and you're out like four or five days on a half million dollar <laughs> bond, but you sell some Bitcoin to, you know, somebody the feds don't like and what you're in jail for life until they decide to give you life. So we got to rally the tr- troops. Uh, everybody look it up. The Crypto 6. You can do letter 6 or type out 6.com. They got their own website. There's videos up. Um, that's is so be- So then after Squatch Fest, I'm packing all my stuff in the car and I'm driving out to New Hampshire. I'm going to Pork Fest and Fork Fest. Um, Pork Fest starts the night of the summer solstice. Woohoo! June 21st. Uh, so we're going to roll hard on the 21st and then I'll open the coffee shop up for business as soon as I wake up on the 22nd and we'll be on for uh, 14 days. Um, so I'm having uh, DJ Lightspeed out again to Pork Fest and Fork Fest on Thursday, the 24th. We're having a, um, we're having a show for Pork Fest and I think it's like 10 to 1. Um, tickets are for sale on foodforestfarms.com. If you just tab to the uh, DJ Lightspeed 2021 tour, instructions are there. Um, that campground I found out this morning is sold out. That campground holds 4,000 people. Which campground is this? Uh, Rogers Campground for Pork Fest in New Hampshire. For Pork Fest, okay. Yeah, so sold out. What's Pork Fest? I haven't heard of that one. Okay, so when Bitcoin forked, like five years ago, yeah, people at Pork Fest got tired of like having to have tickets, having to have rules, having to have vendor fees, having to sign up, having to get permission. So the fork, so the guys from Free Talk Live started Fork Fest. They forked off and said "fork you," and oh there they go. So I am actually going to be there the whole entire time. I haven't paid any money to the Pork Fest people. I'm not officially a Pork Fest vendor, although I got the best spot in the entire campground because I sweet talked the hippie chick at the front desk. <laughs> um, so if you're going to go to the big fat swimming pool by the fanciness, I'm right there. Um, but the uh, yeah, so I am not officially attending Pork Fest as a Pork Fest attendee. I'm calling it my adventure, the Pork Fest adventure. I'm just happened to be there the whole time. So we'll see if it hurts coffee sales or helps, I guess, huh? We'll see if the libertarians are like really for free markets or kind of controlled markets. Man, we will see. The adventure continues. So that's my whole mission, right? So I'm just going out and my 500, I want to know their name, where they live, what they do, how many kids they got, dogs, cats, whatever. You're my people. So I'm going to go serve coffee with you, make you breakfast burrito, or chat it up, argue a bit, fight some, and then whatever. Hopefully you join the tribe. What's, uh, what's the cost to join the 500 club? It's a monthly coffee club, right? So if you get two pounds, it's 34 bucks, which is $17. Uh, if you go down to the old Starbucks over there, I think you're going to find their single origin organic uh, fair trade is probably 18. So I'd say I'm a dollar less and a human roasted the coffee on an analog <laughs> roaster yeah. and actually watched it. It's not a minimum wage kid running a 10,000 batch continuous probat who literally presses the green button and stands back as the computer just spits shit out all day. I mean, yeah, they source good coffee. No, they put no care into roasting it. Yeah. So for well, a that's dollar why, less, you could that's why the biggest, better coffee. the biggest, uh, what criticism of Starbucks is that it tastes burnt. And that's probably why, huh? Yes. I would beg people go to my website and click on the coffee info tab and scroll down, just past the crap for sale and go read my like, it's like two or three pages, but it's why the difference between a drum roasted coffee and an air roasted coffee. What's the difference between a conductive and a convective roast? And what do you not get when you don't have to brew through charcoal? Right, it means you're not putting acids and bitters in your cup intentionally. So when they're not there, you don't have to taste around them to taste the delicate, like nice coffee. So it's it's a whole other it's a whole other way to roast. Um, I worked for the largest air roaster in America uh, uh, when I was in my coffee suit and tie days, um, but it's almost impossible to pull off. Because the largest amount of air roaster, like the biggest air roaster in the world is 160 pounds because of the physics of physically lifting the weight of the beans and trying to keep the airstream hot enough to keep you in the roast area versus the baking area. I mean, we tried. Jesus, we tried. Um, 
but the uh, so it means you need a Costco sized warehouse with like hundreds of roasters working, right? And roasters are super expensive. And now they all got to be computer interlinked. So now you're back to like not a human roasting your coffee, right? It's a computer that's got to fail off the curve before the computer can fix it, get it back on, right? When I'm roasting, I'm a smart human. I can keep the roasting thing on the curve because I can anticipate things happening in the future that the computer has to wait till the failure happens to get back onto it. That's why human roasted, hand roasted coffee is is the shit. I think uh, we talked to Nicole Sauce about drum roasting too. Yeah, um, that's, I kinda, convinced her to get an air roaster. Yeah, yes. that's right. And then, so that's her, right. The air roasting, not not drum roasting. Yeah. So her new roaster, right? She was running on a, um, she was running on one that was powered by it, propane. Made the heat right, but even in the air roasting world, right now you have another cut. Do you make your heat with clean electricity so that air blowing over the beans is clean? Or do you use natural gas or propane, right? Now you're burning a thing. (laughs) And then the air that you're pushing over the beans is merely an exhaust pipe. Think about that. You're burning the flame, right? And you're pushing the hot gas over the beans. So you're literally roasting the beans in an exhaust pipe. It just happens to be a little cleaner exhaust because it's propane or natural gas. But it makes the beans out of any roaster that gets their heat from fire, it makes those beans off the chart high in hydrogen sulfide. So if you're a heart patient, they tell you specifically, like, do not drink fresh coffee off a roaster. Like, don't do it. Like, within seven days is very bad for you. Um, coffee beans suck in whatever they're near. And if you put them literally in a stream of hydrogen sulfide, it will suck it in. Now with grocery store coffee, doesn't matter, right? Cause that stuff's three months old. By the time you see it, it's had plenty of time to off gas all that. Um, but so with her newest roaster, she went to an electric coil heater. So now it's a clean air stream that has a lot less propensity to start her roaster on fire because you also don't have fire in the hole. So it, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. She moved up to the big boy. Uh, I will eventually, you know what, with the 500 project, I don't think I will ever move to that size roaster. That's part of it too, is I just, I don't want to scale because now she's talking about like the, the next steps, like the way and fill and the shipping. You, you need helpers. You need more stuff. You need, more space and more blah. <laughs> um, you, you, well, there's a whole there's a whole thought in permaculture. One of the big ethics, right, is uh, mm-hmm. productions to consumption, product limits to production and consumption. Uh, yeah. People say it a whole bunch of different ways. It's argued about ethic a lot, um, but you know, I I know what it takes to like make my world be really nice, and you know. That's a good limit. That's a great limit. Puts me in balance, keeps my stuff in balance, um, gives me time to do a lot of other things. Uh, um, so, yeah, it, knowing knowing where you want to go and eventually where you want it to end, I, I th- or or uh, what would you say, like a, like permaculture systems, right? We're we're all trying to like progress to be a savanna. Right, the most like biodiverse, most yeah. growth, lots of uh, lots of edges, right? It's most interesting. So, yeah, I mean, could get super huge, but at that point, then that's all I would be doing, and that would I would get bored, and then I would hate it. And why why hate something you love? So, make it the right the make things the right size for for you, you know? Yeah, well, I don't I want mean, to go. With with five hundred with five hundred subscribers, you know, I mean, that's I would say that's probably plenty of income for you. And yeah, yeah, and that's like, why you don't have all the stresses of scale. Plus, you get to develop. I mean, you're obviously an extrovert. You get to you get to establish all these relationships with people. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Making special coffee for their special thing. Their kids getting married. They want like a nice fancy labels and special bags. What it leaves me time to do projects like that and to get involved in people's lives and to like, you know, I, I, I'm still going to teach. Uh, well, now that Squatch Fest is going, gosh, it's awesome. I get to teach something every six months now, so I, that means I get to like teach myself something so I can teach other people something. Um, so yeah, we want to build. Uh, 
we want to build some type of structure for each festival. Um, and Mackenzie's our, our uh, musical coordinator now. So if anybody wants to come out and play for us, um, just get on the telegram. Mackenzie's the gal you're looking for. She'll get you a spot on stage. Um, and then uh, next festival, we're looking for an arts coordinator. So I would like to build something real, like some artifact of art of something that we can have on the property after each festival. Yeah, um, like a big mural or something to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. My buddy Will's got a got a welder and I just learned to weld. So I would love to weld up like a giant salmon out of like a bunch of like random metal stuff laying around, right? And then let the super like colorful artistic people paint it with all that like crazy bright acrylic stuff and something like that yeah whatever i don't care <laughs> so somebody could build a rocket ship the kids could play on I, I whatever let's just let's build something every six months and put some energy into like art light music fun community just getting together man this is a this is something that libertarianism has been missing for half a century it's a yeah i I just went to the Libertarian State Party convention Saturday. Miguel talked me into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so right, I, yeah. I joined the Mises Caucus just so I could go throw bombs. Oh, it was <laughs> great. The uh, I forgot how status libertarians are. Holy smoke. It was all like arguments so they could comply with the election laws and to comply and blah, 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 blah. Wow, like I think I was the only one that stood up and was like, F the government. Like <laughs> you're wanting to comply, like lends legitimacy to them. How about we we barely comply to the minimum comply and comply as they absolutely put a gun to our head, we'll do it. <laughs> I'm, uh, why are we why are we trying to get out ahead to be the good boy to the state? Well, I, I thought this was so anyway, yeah. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, I'm, I'm I'm voting. Throw bombs. I'm pro- I'm proposing a plank to the Minnesota the Minnesota party, uh, if, like officially endorsing black and gray market activity. Uh, we're not sure oh, how, yeah. how well it's going to uh, yeah. go over, but uh, you know, I mean, it, it's your choice whether you're going to engage in it. But if we're going to call ourselves libertarians, we should at least acknowledge that people have the right to engage in commerce, whether or not right. the state says they do. Yeah, and that's uh, we were. He was about to adjourn with nothing really being done other than just yeah. business and business. And Miguel got in a great statement of principles right at the end, oh, really? Um, re- really firm, like Washington State. You know, they uh, they reiterated like uh, the uh, you know the state, the cult of the omnipotent state, yada yada. And uh, you know, we reaffirm that we nullify reject completely disavow any lockdowns vac forced vaccinations whatever so he he got that uh and it passed unanimously like nobody wanted to stand up and do it and then he just did it and it was yeah. if there's an audio tape of that <laughs> it was a lot of applause of the day because it'd be like hey if we're gonna if we're getting together we should at least do something that's like mm-hmm. real yeah so, i think uh, yeah and Miguel, Miguel, who we're, we keep mentioning Miguel, it's Miguel Duque, who uh, I talk to on a, at least a biweekly basis uh, and has been on the show before. I should probably get him back on to talk about this kind of stuff because um, he's, he's, he's real active in both the party and in the sort of agorist communities. Um, and yeah, really, have him on it, right after school. Squatch Fest to get a download of the uh, of what it, you know uh, yeah. of, of of his view of like a decentralized organizing yeah like it, it someone's work someone's doing our website for us I don't even know who <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. it, 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 it's yeah it's decentralized that's uh, that's people be like it's great people are like trying to tell like I'm gonna come up and set up oh I'm like no stop stop just do it just do it. Oh, <laughs> uh... I'm assuming you're going to send me links to all this stuff we've talked about. I've got a bunch of, I've got a bunch of tabs already open just from our conversation. Yeah. Uh, okay. To- so uh, Squ- Squatch Fest is squatchfest.site. Don't go to the .com. We stole Squatch Fest name off of a county festival. That they're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they kind of shut it down for a few years and they were trying to make a comeback right when it COVIDed, right? And then they COVID caved. So we just stole their name. Eh, eh. We're going to run with it till they cease and desist us. And then when they do, then we'll make some news and then we'll make it like Squatch Fest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hell. You're not doing it right till you get a letter from an attorney. Yeah, I know, man. What What are you even doing if, if you're not in legal trouble? Well, 
<laughs> Back in the day when I was a, a geneticist doing cannabis plants, we made a space needle. It was Vortex by Blue Dream. It was a crazy high. It was everywhere out here. Um, it got to be the point where you would Google Space Needle and the clones would come up, like all the shops that had the clones before the Space Needle. Um, they got pissed. So Space Needle Corp sent us a cease and desist. <laughs> that was the best letter we ever got. Oh, it was so popular. Yeah, my partner, when he, he was a toe of the line guy. I was like, let's just name it like Space Nipple or something, you know? No, he wouldn't do it. All right, dude. So, well, what else? So we got squatchfest.site. Is that, a, is that where we want to direct everybody? You want me to put a link to Yeah, yeah, squatchfest.site. If you want to come out to Squatch Fest, it's May 13th through 16th. Uh, for your, for planning purposes, just stick Joma Beach State Park into your uh, GPSs. Uh, uh, we release the address the morning of. It's within a mile or two. Um, and then uh, um, if you want tickets for the Saturday night DJ Lightspeed show or the two New Hampshire shows for Pork Fest or Fork Fest, I would get them early because if that campground is sold out, so we rented the disco dome out there from that uh, crypto company. Um, so it comes with professional lighting and sound and all that. So all we got to do is move in the DJ gear. Um, but we're only selling 150 tickets to both of those shows. And that campground holds 4,000. So I would say get them sooner than later. Um, tickets for the, the shows you can get on the foodforestfarms.com page. Just use a little tabby button, go to the Lightspeed Tour, and uh, there's instructions right there. It's, um, under the, it's under the more menu, specifically. Yeah, under the more menu. And we're only doing crypto in advance. So if you pay with crypto, you can buy in advance. If you are got to pay with the old-fashioned way, you might not get a ticket, is what it is. You know what cool. I mean? We got to push, push the future a little bit. Um, so roll the dice, try to pay with cash, or figure out some basic crypto because you should anyway. And it's super easy, y'all. If you're not paying, even 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 Jose, who uh, may or may not be <laughs> listening to this, man, we, <laughs> he was last time we talked. He was he was just so scared of getting on getting on even like Coinbase. Like, dude, come on, just just do it. You got your you got your little kitty side hustle. Throw some money in it. Yeah, that's what I, you know, I mean, there, you can learn all the other stuff, right? But, oh, well, you know, what the other one that's stupid easy is, is um, I got my dad 75. So I gave him a dollar on the cash app of Bitcoin. Nice. Yeah. You could literally, I mean, it cost me 94 cents to send him a dollar or whatever. But he got to watch the dollar for like, I gave it to him at Christmas. I think by like January, like 20th, he was calling me like, hey, what about this uh, dollar? It's a dollar 95 now or something. And uh, so, yeah, when they got their, their next stimulus, he threw it straight into Bitcoin. Now he's like, oh, nice. my God. I'm he's like, yep, it's uh, that's how it works. Um, so, yeah, Bitcoin on uh, Bitcoin on Cash App is as easy as it gets. And, you know, if you're kind of normie and you want it like approved by a big bank and all that, that's them. But. Yeah, I get on any on ramp, right? And you, yeah. you can figure out the you can figure out the high speed on ramps later. For real. All right. Well, uh, so we got food forest farms. We've got the uh, squatchfest dot um, site. Site. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a, I'm gonna throw a link to the Crypto Six website too. I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, you? would you? Those guys in all their uh, at the bottom of their site, they have all the QWERTY codes for any of that Bitcoin. Um, you you can donate that way to those guys. If you want to donate the old way, uh, Mark, uh, who's uh, Ian's partner, um, he's taken. I want to say PayPal. Yeah, it's PayPal um, Market Free Talk Live dot com at, at Free Talk Live. Yeah, so there is a way, like old school, whatever. They'll any help we can get. It. it I'm not going to say like this is the future of crypto, but this will decide a number of things that are kind of going to lay out the landscape of how crypto goes forward. So if we want team freedom represented properly, if you made some Bitcoin coin in the last few years, you know, maybe just kick back a tiny percentage of the win. Just a little bit. Yeah. They've also, they're also selling a t-shirt for the fundraiser. So uh, that's what I yeah. do because I love t-shirts. So there we go. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, James. Cool. Thank you, Brian. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Thanks again to Brian for joining me today. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. 
If you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed by entering your email at blackbird.substack.com. That's the best way to subscribe to this show because you will get an email update anytime I publish an episode. In addition, you will get any written content sent directly to your inbox. I have been increasing the output of my written content, and I promise you I'm going to start writing even more. That is one of my goals for 2021, and damn it, I'm going to meet that goal. If you feel like supporting the show financially, you can do that at Substack as well. It's only a few bucks a month. In exchange for that, you will get premium content as I release it. And also by becoming a paid subscriber, of course, you get the satisfaction of just knowing that you're supporting this work. And so as always, I appreciate you tuning in for this episode of Blackbird, and I will see you on the next one. Until then, live free.